Koki and Vero. <laughs> Hello. This uh, is my knitting journal, and I'm so happy that I have my dear friend here to record with me. Today is Thursday, April 11, and Vera and I are teaching at a retreat, a knitting retreat here in Portland, Maine. So I asked Vera if she wanted to be a guest in the podcast, and she said yes. Really so. happy to be here. <laughs> so we're going to do a regular episode. We're going to show you everything that we've been working on and finishing since we arrived. And um, yes, do you want to tell us what we're doing? Like what is the retreat that we're working at like? Okay, so we are here uh, for Rogue Knitting Destinations Retreat teaching lovely bunch of ladies yes. it's been amazing everybody has been so friendly and portland maine is stunning yeah it's the first time uh, either of us has been to new england um so portland maine in the u.s for those of you who might not know where that is is in the northeast northeast yes and um, it's been snowing yes <laughs> and <laughs> Uh, yes, it's been really nice. As Vera said, we have two jobs uh, here. So we just finished the first retreat. We're doing two retreats back to back. And they're quite, um, I want to say small groups, but compared yes. to other retreats, they are, they are 40 attendees. So they are a really nice size. Really nice size, I think. Enough people, not too much. Yes. We we get to know everybody. Yes. Vera and I are making an effort learning people's names and uh, it's not always going so well not, for me. But, but we're trying. We're trying, we're trying. So uh, before working, so today's Thursday. Our work started on Monday, but we both arrived last week. We both arrived on Wednesday. And we met a bunch of uh, girlfriends, and we did uh, some sightseeing here in Portland, and we also did a road trip to Montreal. Yes. What was your favorite part of the road, road, road trip? trip to Montreal? Um, I really like to see all the scenery, and I love that I was able to knit <laughs> yes. the whole time because <laughs> Hoagie was driving us yes. there and back. Yes. Yes, that was, I have to say, it was harder than I thought it would be. So it was about six hours on the way there and about six hours on the way back. The way there was really easy and mm -hmm. I thought there were no problems. Yes. But, but then it was raining yes. when we were coming back and it was yes. not so It was fun. not so fun. Uh, but we made it, we came back and then, yeah, we... And I really liked Montreal. I had never been there before, and it was a part of Canada that I, I always kind of wanted to yes, see. Yes. So I'm glad you yes. invited me to this trip. It was very different from West Coast. Yes, so, it was. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but last year Vera and I were teaching at Vancouver, and then we both went on a different road trip on Western Canada. So. We visited the Rockies and national parks, and uh, yes, we you can definitely see the differences yes. between, you know, French Canada and Western Canada. So yeah, it was it was short. It was a short visit, but yes, it was... but I think we saw it all thanks to yes. lovely French who actually took us around. Yes, yeah. so Ariane, if you're watching, <laughs> Hi, Ariane. thank you for uh, showing us around. And uh, then we were invited to, no, we were not invited. I asked the uh, Espastrico <laughs> ladies, uh, Hi, Lisa and Melissa also, I asked them if they would be around because uh, I wanted us to visit the shop and so they said that they that we could visit after they closed. So we 
did a little visit to Espastrico and it was so amazing. It was really, uh, uh, it, was, it wasn't a big shop, no, but they had everything. Everything you can think of and they probably have it. So I, I don't know how, how they do it, like keep everything. They had so much yarn there, yes. and uh, they had these amazing samples that yes. you basically want to buy all the yarn from. So that was great. And uh, we also got to meet um, Tanis, uh, Fiber Arts. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's not her name. <laughs> her name is Tanis, <laughs> but her company is Tanis Fiber Arts. And she came for lunch with us, and we had a lovely lunch, and then we also met another fellow designer, Diana Boala. Mm -hmm. She's uh, Cakes and Vikings. And yeah, it was it was a really good trip. It was, and the weather was so nice the whole day. We walked around Montreal. Yes. I think we were yes. really lucky. So. What are you working on now, Vera? What I'm working on is a, a turtleneck sweater. I started, I think I started when, when I got, got here. When you actually. arrived, yeah, you cast on then here. Then I cast on and I got through with a lot of ribbing. Um, this is uh, worked in Woolen Boon Classic Sock base. Uh, the color is called Smoothie Queen and I just adore this colorway. Yes, so it nice. is amazing. So I don't know if the camera is picking it up uh, but it's I think it's much brighter than it looks. Maybe it is but it's um, lovely like it's dusty pink with some brighter and spots. Did you, this, is this your first <laughs> attempt? No <laughs> it's not. So I, I kept going with a slip stitch pattern that for I, the for, for the, body. the body for the body and I thought I was happy with it but I kept looking and like wondering and then I realized that I don't really like the pattern yes I could tell that she was not enjoying <laughs> it she was like mm. Mm. and she kept working on it but mm. <laughs> yeah I get to all all the way down to to the underarm so I divided for for body and sleeves and then I realized like this is not gonna work. So I frogged back and started with, um, what is this? Broken stitch. Like a broken, broken stitch, stitch, or stitch. Like I call it sand stitch. Sand stitch. But I don't, I don't know, know if you can everyone. see it, but anyway, it's looking much, much better. And I think that it's, you're having an easier time with it. Also, I like knitting this <coughs> uh, so much more. Yes. Than I did with the previous pattern. Okay, so that's so, yeah, your... that's my working process. I'm also <clears throat> I'm also no I'm working on a pair of socks that I don't know if I showed the previous journal, but these are a test knit for my friend Heli. Um, the... I love those cables. Yeah, they it's... are so pretty. I don't remember right now the name of the pattern that I'm working, but um, you will see it soon. It has like a column of knit stitches, and then there, there are these little cables that have like a um, medallion thing or like a coin shape. And now um, on my heel, and um, yes, I have to do the heel turn and make sure that her instructions are okay. I'm not used to doing that. I'm used to just uh, yeah. doing it, doing it, and <laughs> uh, be because this is the us my usual construction. So I, I want to be sure that I also check her instructions and make sure that everything looks like it should. I'm not usually in that role, so I want to make it right. The yarn that I'm using is uh, from La Bienneme the French dyer and friend of ours. It's called maybe BFL Tough Sock. Looks like it. And the colorway is called Fiori. So that's my first. Did you buy that yarn when we were? No, but this yarn, uh, I worked for 
um, Jimmy Beans Wool's uh, uh, craft yes. band calendar last year. So uh, for that project, they wanted me to work with all kinds of different dyers and yarns. So one of the yarns that I had to use for the pattern was this one. And I, I had only used something like 15 grams. So I knew I had enough to make a pair of socks out of my leftovers. So, and I really liked it. And I like BFL socks. Yes, me too. So, yeah, I just decided to use this for my test knit, which is going kind of slow, but I'm hoping that... I'll Do miss. you have a deadline? <laughs> she didn't give me a deadline. She's like me. She's very kind. Um, but That's I don't know good. if she'll, you know, if she'll publish the pattern at some time but uh, also um, we're going home on Sunday so I might work on those socks on the plane mm -hmm. and finish one and yes. say yes the test need <laughs> is done yes exactly <laughs> do you have other works in progress with you um yes I actually have um, I'm almost done with this one let me just get I like it your out. bag I know you um, really like this one I really like this one it's my neon bag from walk collection thank you Catherine for this <laughs> <laughs> this is like my absolute favorite yes I know it's made out of uh, I think it's parasailing yes, fabric yes so it's waterproof it never gets any dirt on and it's super, it's super light it's packable yeah everything you can hope for. So the project, if I get it out of the bag, because it's, it's getting big. I'm down to the last sleeve of this one. And I am working on a colorwork sweater in House of Alamode um, sport, sport base. And I'm really looking forward to actually getting this one done. So this sweater has a uh, stockinette color work part at the yoke and then reverse stockinette for the body and the sleeves and little detailing here. And the detail is also in, in stockinette stitch from the right exactly. side. Exactly. So what I'm doing is that, of course, I don't want to keep curling. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm working it inside, inside out, out, out for the reverse yeah. stockinette part. So what colors are these? Uh, these are melon and ap apricot. And uh, it's sport weight. Do you think sport that weight. I really people like... can substitute with fingering? Or? Probably yes, because my gauge is something like 26 oh, okay. stitches. Yeah, so then for sure. For sure. But for I like sure. the, I like the plumpy. fabric, the plumpy. Yes. yes, it's amazing. And I think this is going to be called fruit, fruit bowl. Fruit bowl. <laughs> yeah. So, fun. Yeah, because of the colors. Because of the colors. Yes. yes. It's gorgeous. <laughs> Vera has been diligently working on that. Uh, yes. Maybe it will be done I before hope so. the retreat is over so she can wear it. Actually, I have round yoke uh, sweaters class tomorrow. So I And something should... happened also. Um, so Vera and I um, want to show you. So, it's the first time I have seen our book in real life uh, okay. during this trip. So, I have told about Interpretation 6 already a couple of journals ago, but now I can show you the actual real book, real book <laughs> that we wrote together. As you can see, this is us. And so, uh, the book was presented in Edinburgh Yarn Festival like three weeks ago mm -hmm. and Pom Pom, our publisher, they received all our samples and they were displaying them there and our colleague and friend Bristol Ivy offered to bring the samples back to the state so that we could have a trunk show here at the retreat. So <laughs> we, we were reunited with our samples for yes. the first time on Monday and when we're looking at them, we realize that there are three missing. They are not gone. They just were left behind in the yes. by mistake. But, but we 
got a bit. We got a bit worried <laughs> that they had been stolen or, or lost. Lost. And, um, but the thing is that one of the, you know, there were two sweaters missing. Yes. Vera's sweater that's missing is a round yoke Yoke pullover that Mm -hmm. she had to use for her class materials and my missing sweater is a boxy sweater (laughs) that I had to use for my boxy class we were like of all the samples (laughs) those two (laughs) two. so but it worked out anyway and we are glad that they are yes but I suppose that you might want to finish that one Yes, for your round that would be nice class. I won't be finishing any new boxy class. The boxy <laughs> sweaters for my class, I'm afraid, no. Um, so, okay, that's your second work in progress. I have two more works in progress. One of them I'm going to show very quickly because um, it has only grown a little bit. So it's this cowl, uh, new design that I had shown. That is um, so pretty. Thank you. It's going to be amazing. So it's a pretty simple um, striped cowl. That, and I'm adding these little eyelets. And I'm trying to make an odd number of stripes so that we get eyelets in both colors. And I'm using um, Manasul Uruguay Fino in rose water. It's quite bright. so. It's not as light as it looks on the screen. And this is their new base Alma in some kind of gray color. Probably charcoal or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> or slate. Yeah, it has that blue quality. I don't it's remember. Some, could I be really slate, like could be pewter, could be Do one it. of those gray names. But they behave almost the same. The difference between them is that this one has... Um, maybe like 30% silk content and <clears throat> this one is 100% merino but they they actually look pretty much the same on the project and I'm using my BA bag that I've been testing since I left home and it's working out all right now it, what are it, your feelings about the bag it is gorgeous by the way Thank you. Now I'm really happy with it. It has eaten my yarn once, oh. <laughs> the zipper. Oh, yes. Everyone's concerned about the zipper eating my yarn. It has eaten my yarn only once. And yeah, I just got out of it. I, I yes. just got the yarn out of it. Exactly. I suppose it's like with every zipper, <laughs> it, might, it might eat your yarn. Um, no, it's beautiful. I'm super, I'm super pleased with them. So... Um, we're gonna have them for sale at the end of April so yeah so that's that those are going well and my last you don't have any other and my last uh, work in progress is in this new uh, bag do you want to show your bag yes (laughs) (laughs) because we have have new bags matching bags (laughs) and our friend Mia got two so let me tell you about this bag first um, I have talked about my friend Nu and her business a couple of times in my journal before. And if you remember when I came back from Canada last year, I showed you guys a beautiful purse, a handmade leather purse that I had ordered from her. Uh, it was uh, it had a round bottom and it was hand stitch. And shortly after. Nu opened her shop up again and she started making some project bags and she was posting teasers and work in progress photos so I asked her if I could order one but I couldn't receive it until I came here so this bag is uh, her company is called Hayden Hammer and this is her logo and this is her project bag i think it's called project bag 03 Mm -hmm. so they are made out of canvas it's not a very um, sturdy sturdy canvas it's just very flexible so it's also good for you know putting this inside your backpack or or your purse and they have a leather a leather closure that you can uh, adjust to different lengths. So let's suppose your bag is really full. 
you can uh, tie it there. Or if you, like me, have a very young project, then you can just uh, have it a little bit tighter. And then uh, it has a side handle also, so if you want to knit as you go, you can do that. And what else? So the bag is really big, as you can see you... And it has nice little pockets inside. Yes. So, that's so inside... So this is how I usually use, use it, it. You too. When yes. Hold on. Just one sec. Someone's knocking on the door. We were just delivered wine and <laughs> fruit by our bosses. Yes. <laughs> Apparently we did a good job. Yes. Cheers. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> mm. Okay. So. I was showing you the pockets. It has one bigger pocket here mm -hmm. um, without a closure, so yes. you know you could you can put your notions back there or yes. your pattern. And then it has some um, little um, like how do you call this like slots? Yeah, maybe? like slots for pens or crochet needle or. Um, something like that and um, yeah well that's basically it I'm really happy with it I love the color mustard yes. so oh yes so inside I have my last work in progress which is um, the tunic that I started before coming um, so uh, this is how far I've Come. I didn't make a lot of progress because I think that I haven't been making a lot of progress on my knitting anyway even though we were talking today that yes we have been bringing <coughs> our knits everywhere and even taking them out yes. of the project bag but then I get like four stitches done yes and our, our knits are not growing much so Mm, yes, yeah, so what I'm thinking is I'm going to save this project for mom because she'll really enjoy knitting on it and, um, you know, working because it's quite easy. So I'm just going to focus on my other projects, my test knit and my, my cowl. And the yarn. And the yarn <laughs> is yarn ink uh, something decay. I'm so good. <laughs> something decay. And uh, the colorway is called Pebble, that I remember. It's so for really some, nice. I remember the bases and not the colors, and <laughs> for other, I remember the colors. Yeah, I'm really happy with the color because it's, um, yeah, it's a nice speckle. There's, there's many speckles. I think that's what I like. Yes. There are lots of yes. speckles everywhere. It's not just uh, two colors, but it's... Yes. A lot of them, and I like how even. Yeah, exactly. It seems I have to, to say though that I had to alternate okay. skeins well, most of the time. Makes it work. Yes, perfectly. So those are my uh, works in progress. Um, yes. So, do you have any finished objects? Um, I do. I have. Some of you might have seen that when I left home. I had my pink fluffy thing on the needles and I actually did finish this on the plane or planes. So, so what are we looking at? We are looking at a a crazy cardigan. <laughs> More or less. <laughs> uh, slightly oversized, a bit. I love the construction. It's really it's, cool here at the Raglan it's line. It's really fun. This hasn't been blocked, but I don't need I don't know if this yarn really needs, needs blocking. blocking that Maybe much. It's just to just even exactly out the even stitches. out the stitches a bit, but otherwise it should be good to go. Um, so what yarn? This is Sandness Garn Do you Rushed have Alpaca. No. no, I don't, unfortunately, okay. but it's Burstet Alpaca. A lot, a alpaca. lot of neat uh, dyers are using now. Brush yes. Suri, yes. which I think should yes. be the same base, you think? Similar. 
Yes, for sure. And I like how soft this is, and yes, it's not it's itchy so nice. at all. And well, this blush pink. Is so it's like just my favorite. it's just one hundred percent Avaca, or at least uh, like ninety. Most of it. Most yes. of it, maybe even all of it. And it has a pocket. It has pockets, pocketsies, and yeah. A lot yeah. of so where do you start working uh, on this? Start, start here with the back of the neck, do the collar, and then pick up stitches and work your way down. Great. So super fun, super so easy. So is it kind quick. of cropped in the front it and is. a bit longer in the back? It is, longer in the back. That's yeah. awesome. Yay! Yes. Are you ready to test this? The pattern is really sketchy notes at this point so do you think there is it, some do you think it done. would be easy for you to write it when you go home or yes, you need to think a lot no it's gonna be easy yes so soon so soon keep an eye out and i have one finished object i know you have another one so i'll show mine no, and then no I, that's just my finished object oh yeah. why did i think you had another finished object no you can't of course no. <laughs> that's <Okay>. it <laughs> <laughs> i have one finished object too uh, it's the farm twist cardigan that I have been showing you guys I finished it on the plane the second sleeve and um, yeah it worked out super well and actually um, when I, I blocked it when I arrived I had blocked the body but I hadn't blocked the sleeves sleeves exactly mm -hmm. thank you and Vera makes me be a bit less slow. <laughs> she tells me, Let's keep going. <laughs> she tells me what I have to do. So I finished it. Um, as you can see, it's uh, slightly boxy, slightly cropped. It's not too cropped, yeah, but really it is nice. a cropped line. And um, it has the all the details that I have already shown with the slanted shoulders and the crew neck. I really like all the bubbles. Yeah, lots of bubbles. <laughs> it's so cute. And uh, so I did a um, tubular bind off for all the bands, but I think I had shown that already. I did a tubular bind off um, for the cuffs too. Uh, yes, and I was wearing this the night that we did the welcome dinner yes. here at the retreat and people noticed it which yes uh, and i made... think you got a lot of compliments yeah so that. that made me really happy they were like oh what are you wearing oh this is my new design <laughs> <laughs> so that was really really nice uh to know that you know people liked it uh so that's my finished object sadly this one is going to be very hard to write oh. So I don't think you guys can expect this anytime soon, but I'll do my best to write it. Um, we have a naked guy, a uh, naked chest guy <laughs> on, on the building <laughs> across us. I feel like we're an episode of Friends. Yes. <laughs> um, he's smoking now, our naked jacket guy. Sorry. Um, so that's my finished object for today. We have a lot of goodies. I have at least a lot of goodies to show. Mm -hmm. Shall I start? You can start. Okay. So the first thing that I got besides the project bag that I already showed you was um, some yarn from Kim at Barn Yarn Knits. Kim and I have been talking to each other a couple of times. I know she watched, watches the podcast and um, she's a fan of my mother, actually. Who wouldn't be? <laughs> <laughs> I think we all are. <laughs> so she really wanted to send us a gift and I didn't have a lot of luggage space, but I know that I really wanted to try her yarns also. So. Um, she asked me if I could pick um, something, if mom could pick a skein of yarn because she wanted to send something for her. And so she sent um, mom some presents. I'm going to show, she sent more things for mom, but I'm only going to show a few things today. I'm going to show the rest of the things when I go home because I'm with Vera and I think it's more interesting that, you know, we hear her talk 
rather than list you know all the things that I've been shopping for but I wanted to show this special kit because it was sent for mom and it's really nice I think those colors are amazing yeah so this so could good. be this could become any gradient or a fade shawl that she mm -hmm. likes or even if she made it like a little cardigan, I think she could yes. make it work with three skeins. Definitely, yes. So this is... And it has a lot of yardage. Yes, exactly. So 463 yards. And it's a sock yarn, but we both use sock yarn for yes. any kind of project. So the colors are Rosebud, Desert Rose in the middle, and Bloom darker one really nice yes so that's one thing and uh, I don't know if I can show this but I'm just gonna go ahead and show them yeah, I think ahead. I can yes <laughs> so um, there's a really crazy talented scissor designer that some of you might know about and uh, she her company is called Ken Scott designs and it's written like this and she has, uh, she makes really unique scissor designs. Mm -hmm. uh, you probably saw those scissors that have a bigger space for your fingers and then a tiny yes. short um, cutting area. Uh, well, those are her design and there are some that looks like little, that look like little flowers also. Mm -hmm. Doesn't she also have like those square? Yes, she has square, square <laughs> ones. She has all kinds of um, really cool scissors. They are sold at shops everywhere mm -hmm. and she has her own online store. So um, she uh, has started a new idea and she's designing scissors inspired by designers. She already did some scissors inspired by our friend Susan B. Anderson. They are called the Susan Scissors. Mm -hmm. And she asked me if she could design some scissors inspired by me. So I, I hope it's okay for me to show them. I know that they are going to be available at the end of May mm -hmm. and probably June. Uh, so these are not yet available, but I was so excited that I wanted to show them. So these are the scissors inspired by me. They are super sleek. Yes. And super, super sharp. Um, I don't know if I'm a sharp person, but apparently I am. <laughs> um, and I love them. I'm so proud that she designed them because I think that they are so stylish. They, she sent me the primitive black option. I think it's the only option available so far. And they have this... Um, texture on them that looks like yarn wrapped around the scissors and the blades are crazy sharp like <laughs> crazy sharp i think they are the most elegant scissors <laughs> ever thank you <laughs> yes <laughs> so um thank you i am crazy excited and honored that you know that you designed these scissors inspired by me and I look forward to their release. Congratulations, uh, you're very, very, very talented. Um, do you have any acquisitions with you? No, but maybe we can talk about yarn. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yes. that's great. Let me do an increase here, and then I can actually talk. I'll wait for you. That's really nice. So, uh, the... The other super exciting thing that we got to do on our road trip was to visit Julie Asselin and John Frenchel. Yeah, so they are the the people behind Julie Asselin's brand yes. and they do all the work. All the work. And it was amazing to... We got invited to a lunch. Yes. And so I, they live... On, on, the, on way, the way to Montreal, yes. about halfway from where we were coming and to where we yes, were going. Yes, so that was such a special treat for us to see the behind the scenes action, to actually see the dice studio. Mm -hmm. It's so fascinating, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's, it is. And we didn't know. Uh, actually, we knew. Well, I was driving, so I wasn't aware of everything. Um, 
but our friend Mary Jane, uh, who was riding with us, she was texting with Julie and first she offered if we wanted to stop for lunch. So she said, she was texting us saying, I'm going out for groceries. And, and then when we arrived, uh, she said, well, Jean-Francois has a surprise. And yes. the surprise was that we got to dye our own color. And that's pretty huge. Yes. <laughs> yes. So um, when we went downstairs, they have their studio um, in their kind of like a garage or, mm, or a basement. Like a basement, yes. right. So they had, they asked us what bases we wanted to dye. So we dyed three different bases. So we didn't know. <laughs> we didn't know. <laughs> We had no idea. We had no idea we were going to do this. We had, well, like Vera and I, we are not dyers. We have never thought of, you know, how to dye a yarn or, um, you know, at least me, when someone says, what color do you want? I get like, Hmm? I'm happy with whatever. (laughs) So we dyed three bases. Um, This is one of their newer bases. It's a sport weight something. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this is something like a Romney something. And then uh, the single ply, this is a regular single ply, 100% merino, and, and the mohair. mohair. So first we said uh, we wanted dusty pink. Yes. I think we were all thinking of the color of your <laughs> cardigan, <laughs> but it turned out like this. Uh, which is beautiful. It is so beautiful. It was not the color we were going for, mm. but it turned out really yes. nice. It's super beautiful. Uh, and then uh, we said, I was wearing like a t-shirt more yes. or less this color, I think. Yes. Or a bit Slightly darker. Richer. Yes. Like greenish. So we all said like, oh, what about the color of my t-shirt? And yeah, yeah. So we dyed the um, sport weight in this color. And we were dyeing the... Sing, the um, Merino single, single in the color yes, in mohair. Yes, this color. But then we added a layer we added of the on top. toffee. And this so is we think that this is the best yes, color ever. ever. <laughs> we don't know. I think that Julie is keeping this color in her we repertoire. So. <laughs> it's beautiful. It is beautiful. And for me, the cutest thing was that Jean-Francois was taking notes of what he was doing, just in case he wanted to replicate, I suppose, yes. what we were doing. So the title for that page was Super Friends Colorway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he was taking notes of that <laughs> below. So I thought that was a very sweet memory. Yes. So this is what we did at Julie Aslin. Of course, we are not as talented as they are, but, no, but this is our special dye. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that's that. And I have a, some yarns to show too. So um, when I was at Julie's, I um, asked her if I could have some of uh, her yarn for a future design. Uh, we had been texting about that before I arrived. Um, so um, I I picked this base. It's called Julie, or probably I'm mispronouncing that in French. Julie, um, but it's like a bul- bulky or chun- no, chunky, chunky weight. Um, 100% wool and I wanted to make like a quick 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 um, cropped pullover mm-hmm. and she has she doesn't have so many colors she has something like 12 colorways so her colorways for this base are more limited than her other bases so you would think that that would make my decision easier but I'm so bad <laughs> at picking my own colorways <laughs> I'm so terribly bad that um, I'm usually the kind of person that will tell the dyer, like, can you pick something for me? <laughs> <laughs> and that usually works out for the best. But Julie didn't want to do that. She didn't want that commitment. So she was like, you know, whatever you like. And, and I kept, you know, going back and forth. You um, had the, something more purplish. It was like a pinkish, purplish. purplish. 
So I kept going back and forth and I had, you know, eventually I decided that I would, um, that I would pick a, like a pink purple lilac thing. And because my reason is that when I work with a dyer, I feel like I need to also showcase what they do. Yes. Do you get that also? Yes, I, I get that. Like, um, if I'm buying yarn for myself, I will always pick black yes. or gray <laughs> or something very neutral. But if, you know, if I'm collaborating with a dyer, um, if this dyer is giving me the yarn to work with, like Julie is, then I feel like I need to do something to, you know, show the dyer's talents coming up mm. with a color. Mm. So I didn't want to pick the dark <laughs> black. <laughs> But, um, so when I arrived at Julie's and I saw the color, I was like, oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's very pink. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't, I, I mean, it was beautiful, yeah, but was sometimes beautiful. when you look at, you know, the colors mm -hmm. against your skin, they look, they look kind of different to what you expect. So I was just holding it um, and then... Uh, I saw these other skeins uh, just sitting on her table. So I was like, oh, Julie, do you, do you have these? Uh, are these, you know, an order for someone? And, sh and Julie said, uh, no, you can take them, and those look a lot better on you. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so Julie also, when, when she saw me holding the pink yes. skeins, she was like, oh, that's Maybe not going that's to work. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so so I took this colorway for a future design, and it's called Licorice. Do you have a plan? Yeah, it's going to be simple and probably with some, like, cables, but I wish I had the needles to start it because I was really excited to but um, I only brought my my I don't have them here but my Ahaya my Ahaya Ahaya is interchangeable mm -hmm. which are your favorite needles what do you use uh, Chaya Goose I for a very, a very long time I used to only do bamboo needles like or wooden yes, needles yes, in you, general yeah you had the harmony yeah and I didn't ones. really like I didn't like metal needles at all and then because I found, they make more noise because or? they make more noise okay. actually my husband used to comment like <laughs> get rid of those <laughs> they are driving me nuts <laughs> so i i for a very long time only yes, used wooden I needles remember you had those. but these chaya goose i don't think there is any turning back because mm. i feel that my knitting is faster it's more even maybe and I get Do so you much use the done. interchangeables? No, I actually have all all the fixed ones, so I just keep buying more and so, more. <laughs> so let's say when you come here, mm -hmm. do you bring, you know, uh, an amount of needles just in case you buy something and you have to start right away? So do you have? Do you bring? Like, I have three or like four? a small selection, but I know that even if I I can probably make any needle work for like okay. like I have. Maybe US sevens are the biggest you ones, saying that and I'm sure I can even do something bulky. I remember you once mentioning that. How do you do that? Do you? I just control keep your gauge. Kind of like, and I I'm such a loose knitter that doing it mm -hmm. on the like smaller needle actually doesn't. It doesn't show. Yeah. So I don't think that I could need. This yarn, for example, the, the one that we were talking about, do you think that you can knit this with a US 7 or 4.5 millimeters? So. Yeah, I don't think I'd be able to... Keep the tension? No, to even, you know, even do, it. do the stitch. I think that it yeah. would be so tight. Mm. But I, I remember you once uh, when we bought the Brooklyn Tweet Quarry. Yes, I had something like that with me and did the design yes. on those needles. Yes. And still getting like a reasonable gauge. gauge. That's amazing. That's amazing. Okay. And I have two more things to show. Um, this is some yarn that Tanis gave me, Tanis Fiber Arts, when she came for lunch. 
So it's some of her done hand dyed. And there you can see her brand, Tannis Fiber Arts. And this is like a, I think it shows pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. It's the, it's 100% organic merino, uh, treated because it's been dyed. And it's uh, called Pure Wash Worsted. And the colorway is called Mona Lisa. I like it. It's like gray confetti. It's yes. amazing. Yes. It's really nice. So then you can see. All yeah. the speckles. All the speckles. And also, we got to talk to Tanis about her business and mm -hmm. how they do things. And um, they, they also do all the work themselves. They're a couple with three very young children. And they do all the work themselves and all the dying. And I don't know, sometimes I feel like companies that I've known for so many years, they are actually, I don't know, like big companies with uh, lots of stuff. And it's just them doing exactly. their dying in I their shed. The same, and same, same like revelation, both with Julia Celine, even though I, yeah. I, we have known each other yeah, for yeah, a yeah. longer time. But, yeah. Uh, with Tannis, I think this was the first time we met her. Yes. And I also had the feeling that it's a big company. A big company, <laughs> and yeah, it's just Tannis and Chris doing all the work. And the other thing that I couldn't resist is when we went to Espa Strico, um, they had some of the nightshades yarn that has been um, popular. I think this is like a newer yarn or something that yes. I've seen people mention this a lot in the last year. So this is, um, it says grown in Montana. So I suppose that's where the sheep are. Mm -hmm. And spun in New Hampshire, where we were just driving by. Yes. We, were, we just drove by through New Hampshire to get to Montreal. E by Harrisville Designs, which I think it's a very worldwide famous spinnery mm -hmm. in this area. So I don't know a lot about nightshades. I really like the, um, the look of the whole collection. So I picked the color to bring home. What I noticed is that, okay, there are probably people who describe this a lot better, but all the yarns had a lot of black in them, and then they had these little heathery bits that you can see, Mine's, mine are white, um, but they had all these heathery bits in all sorts of colors, like yes. purple, blue, red. Green. So I bought enough to make a sweater, and it's so light. Yes, it's amazing. I I regret not buying it. Yes, the price was um, quite good. Uh, it wasn't cheap. Uh, I think I paid thirty Canadian. Um, so that's about twenty five US, more or less. So more or less twenty five US, tax included. So that was not too bad. Um, so yeah. Uh, oh, and it's American Cormo. I didn't say what's special about that is that it's American Cormo. It's a really soft crossbreed between Merino and Corridan. I also bought something from Canada. And I got two skeins of lichen and lace. Um, Marsh mohair um, in color amber which is so good <laughs> it's super soft it is super soft. and the color is so so rich it i is. think it shows yes very well i think it screen. shows yeah. um, but yes i think that at first when i was looking at their prices i i, I am not totally aware of you know international pricing for young because mm -hmm. i don't buy uh, yarn that often but, you know, I was a bit more careful with what I was buying because I was seeing the prices in Canadian dollars. Yeah, and then right. I realized that yes, they different. were in Canadian dollars. <laughs> so, oh, okay, let's get all the yarn. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you have any designs coming up, you think? Uh, the next one 
will be my previous color work sweater that has been thoroughly test knit but I'm still lacking final photos mm. <laughs> so that is on my to-do list is it hard get to get final photos for you uh, not really but I like to take the pictures myself mm. not model the, the sweaters so I rather ask some of my <laughs> who, are, who are your <laughs> models? models who are your models my models are both of my sisters-in-law typically the dark-haired <laughs> ladies and then two of my best friends from from primary school mm -hmm. actually uh, the red-haired beautiful lady and the blonde beautiful mm -hmm. lady <laughs> so I mm, one I, of them will be modeling this. I hope yes, so. Yes. I hope so. So tell us about this, please. So this sweater is uh, knit with Ushitita. Mm -hmm. So really nice single ply yarn. I love her colors. I think this is my first time using uh, any of her yarns. You know, I'm, I have some of her yarn. I've never used it either. And I really like how rich these colors are like they have all these different different bits yes. in them and mm, it's just both colors are by her yes how hard do you think it is for someone who's never done color work before um, I think give it a try it's not that hard and what I like is that, for example, for this, you do it from top down. So you do the color work first. So you will... You, know, you will know. You will I have know. a question about color mm -hmm. work. Do you change your needle size for, to do the color work part? Uh, sometimes. Uh, for this, um, I actually kept going. And I think my gauge stayed even. But, but I me mean, sure. personally, I have to go up and use Yes, size. typically, and I feel that the the smaller um, the circumferences that I'm doing, the tighter my for gauge. For the cuff, yes. for the cuff, so for, for the other that, sweater. I need to go uh, up okay. the needle size. Yes. yes, that's beautiful, Vera. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, did you, you mention that it had a name? Night Thoughts. Night Thoughts. Yes. <laughs> yes, I think Julie has tested yes. this. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> So this is the next one that you have. The next up. one. Thank yes. you for showing that. My pleasure. Uh, do we have anything else to say? I don't know. So I guess that's <laughs> it. I <laughs> hope you enjoyed my special guest. Thank, Thank you, you Vera. For me. <laughs> and see you next time. Bye. Bye.